Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Today's Mass is being offered in thanksgiving for Elaine Buhe. Coming together as God's family, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who brought the abbot St. Anthony to serve you by a wondrous way of life in the desert, Grant, through his intercession, that denying ourselves, we may always love you above all things. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel said to Saul, Stop! Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Saul replied, Speak. Samuel then said, Though little in your own esteem, are you not leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king of Israel, and sent you on a mission, saying, Go and put the sinful Amalekites under a ban of destruction. Fight against them until you have exterminated them. Why then have you disobeyed the Lord? You have pounced on the spoil, thus displeasing the Lord. Saul answered Samuel, I did indeed obey the Lord and fulfill the mission on which the Lord sent me. I have brought back Agag, and I have destroyed Amalek under the ban. But from the spoil, the men took sheep and oxen, the best of what had been banned, to sacrifice to the Lord their God in Gilgal. But Samuel said, does the Lord so delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience to the command of the Lord? Obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission than the fat of rams. For a sin like divination is rebellion, and presumption is the crime of idolatry. Because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he too has rejected you as ruler. The word of the Lord. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, 
for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth? Though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. The Lord be with you. I read from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to Jesus and objected. Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak. If he does, its fullness pulls away. The new from the old and the terror gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's readings, I think, need a little bit of explanation to kind of see the context of them. In today's first reading, what we're hearing about is that the Jewish people the readings that we have, the Jewish people are in a process of conquesting new lands. And one of the rules of battle was that in the ancient days, people would commonly gather spoils. So once you conquered a people, in order to even fuller, more fully humiliate them, having beat them in war, was to take their possessions. And usually that was animals, as we hear in today's first reading, would have been anything of value like gold or silver. And sometimes it was even wives and children. So the whole point was that you basically didn't just beat the people, you also took spoils, gains from them. And what the prophet Samuel is pointing out today is that these sacrifices were made to the Lord, these spoils from battle, and essentially he was telling them this is not according to uh, the prescriptions of the law. In other words, it's kind of like someone robbing a bank, and this does happen, by the way, sometimes. People rob the bank, and then they go and give the money to the poor, and they're like Robin Hood or something. And all of a sudden, they've done something good, if the initial thing you did was wrong, it doesn't make the following actions good. And so what's happening today is that Samuel is pointing out that this is not the way the Jewish people are going to live their life. And in fact, maybe putting this in context, one of the things that we know uh, during World War II is that the Nazis confiscated great art collections. And in fact, to this very day, there are Jewish families that are trying to recover art that originally belonged to their families, which are 
you know, worth like a hundred million dollars or something. You know, these extremely valuable pieces of art. So this is, this is something that is real. And in today's gospel, what we also hear is that Jesus' followers are not fasting the way that John the Baptist's followers did or the way the Pharisees did. And so people are saying, well, what about you? And we come back to this image of the bridegroom is with you. Remember, yesterday's reading from Sunday's Mass was about the wedding at Cana. Jesus is ushering in a new time, a time of celebration, a time of hope, a time of new life. Because remember, if there's anything a wedding is, it's two people coming together and becoming one flesh. That is what a wedding is about. A man and a woman coming together and becoming one flesh. A new creation, a new being. And so, as we listen to today's gospel, we also hear about the wineskins. And again, most of us don't have wineskins at home. We can't just drag them. I remember when I was a kid, we used to have like little, um, I guess they were canteens, that, you know, you could buy it like a Daniel Boone store or something, and you could pretend you were, you know, some kind of adventurer, and you could put water in it. You know, you kind of might remember those. It's something like that, but it's not something you commonly have. But it's one of those things that Jesus is again pointing out the newness. New wine, new wineskins. This is a whole new way of looking at the world and looking at Christ's presence in the world. Now, it's interesting that today's readings, is that we're also celebrating the memorial of St. Anthony, the Desert Father. And he's probably a saint a lot of you aren't familiar with, but he lived to be 105. And he truly is, I believe, and I'm going to say this, is if you really want to enter into your spiritual life, if you really want to know how our Lord works in us, Read the book that's written about him by St. Athanasius. And this goes back to the first century. It's the life of St. Anthony, and it is a description of his life. Because St. Anthony came from a very wealthy Egyptian family, and he lived at a time when there was great wealth. It was the height of the Roman Empire. And he decided to go out into the desert and live as a hermit in Egypt. And if you've been to Egypt, you know that it's a desert in the places, in certain places, especially where the desert fathers lived. And he went out there, and his whole being was dedicating his life fully to God. But one of the things that St. Athanasius helps us understand in the life of St. Anthony is that he struggled with his inner life. He struggled with himself, with his own sinfulness. And this is something that has to take place in order to develop a deep and profound spiritual life. You have to struggle with the complexities and the sinfulness within ourselves and within our world. And that's exactly what he does. And in fact, others, he meant to be a hermit, and others came out and wanted to follow in his footsteps. They wanted to uh, follow in how he was living his life. So there became a community of hermits that lived in this area in the desert. And it was a great tradition within the early church. And in fact, the life of St. Therese in a cloistered convent is really modeled on this. It's really modeled on living your life fully dedicated to God within a, 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 an enclosure and allowing the Lord to speak to you and wrestling with what's your interior life, wrestling with how your own sinfulness gets in the way of you truly, fully loving God. Now, one thing St. Anthony is known for is fasting. So it's interesting that this is today's gospel. But notice the bridegroom is no longer with them. So as we celebrate today, we also remember that today is Martin Luther King Day as a nation. We remember that. 
and we remember the works of service that he encourages among us. And in the state of Illinois, this is his first year, it's also Muhammad Ali Day. So we have a lot going on. I'm trying to think of a way to bring these all together. They're probably disparate people. But one of the things that we know is that our Lord works in each one of us. Our Lord desires to create new things in each one of us. And each one of us has our own calling, our own spirit, our own desire to know and experience the Lord. And he will speak to us and allow us to live our lives in such a way that we are true to how he has formed us. Because we are new wineskins. Each one of us is a new creation. We're not carbon copies of each other. And even within families, everyone knows that every kid isn't the same. And don't expect your kids to be exactly like you are, because you might be disappointed. It might happen, but it might, you might be disappointed. What our Lord teaches us is that he is the one who gives us spirit. He is the one who gives us life. And he desires most deeply that we are true to who he has created. That we are true to the goodness that is within us. And sometimes, as we all know, that can be a struggle. But it's something that our Lord calls us to do each and every day of our lives. Let us bring our prayers before our, before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray, first of all, for Francis, our Pope, and for his intentions, and for bishops, priests, deacons, and religious. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are least in our world, especially those who suffer because of racial injustice. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the people of our nation, that we may be gathered as one. We pray to the Lord. Let us remember those who are hungry, those who do not have enough food to eat, for those who do not have an opportunity for education, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for those who are sick, for those who are in need of God's healing, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for the intentions of the supporters of the Society of Little Flower, for these we pray to the Lord. And let us remember today at Mass, especially Tyler Dukes and also Elaine Buhe, we pray to the Lord. And let us now bring our own prayers and our own longings before our Father in Heaven. We pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, we bring all our prayers before you. We ask you to remember also our beloved dead, for whom we now remember in prayer. We ask all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty.
May these offerings of our service placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Anthony be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that, released from earthly attachments, we may have our riches in you alone. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, or, and also Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We have merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other a safe sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ, give me save everlasting life. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ.
Let us pray. Nourished for our healing by your sacraments, O Lord, may we escape every snare of the enemy unharmed, just as by your grace St. Anthony won glorious victories over the power of darkness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I lead Mount Carmel. Go in the peace of Christ. The Mass is ended. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.